Whew, welcome back to yet another video, fish boys and fish girls. Thank you for clicking on today's video. And by the title, you can probably tell that I am about to break down, in my opinion, the top five fall baits. Oh, it's a stud, dude. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. Crank the undie. It's done. Fish. Yep. <laughs> Man, that's a pretty fish right there. It was going anywhere. It hooked right through the tongue. That's awesome. So it's finally that time of year where the temperatures are dropping, the fish are moving up, and they're starting to chase shad. Basically get all fattened up for the winter. It makes for an awesome, exciting time to be fishing. A lot of big fish are caught around this time. A large quantity of fish are caught. I mean, it's just, it can be complete mayhem with the bite when they get schooled up, pushing shad or biting the crawfish, or even bluegill, depending on what kind of body that you're in. And of course, your five baits for the fall time uh, will vary depending on the body of water that you're fishing. So there's not a perfect five baits to go out there and catch them. I mean, there's probably a perfect 100 or 200 baits that you can go and throw. I like to try and break it down into categories and then from there you can kind of fine tune it. So if you're looking for that video that shows you exactly which bait to throw at exactly what time on a Wednesday, I'm um, sorry, but this is not that video. But I'll give you some insight on, on how you can determine it for yourself with your body of water and it'll help you much more in the long run and you'll catch way more fish doing this and you'll be able to adapt way easier. It really just depends on your body of water, but the five baits that I'm showing you, these style of baits and different patterns can definitely catch fish at your at your local fishery. Now I see these these five baits is kind of like a combo deal. Like you wanna throw them together. You wanna to have them all tied on and when you go out to the lake, you wanna alternate between them depending on what the fish are doing. And it's kind of like a one-two punch with five baits. I mean, they all go hand in hand and they work together to catch fish. Not everyone has five different setups to put these baits on there. So you gotta work with what you got. Uh, but having these baits on the deck of your boat or in your bag will definitely help you out and just swap between them and they'll catch a fish. So without further ado, I'll break down where, when, and how to throw these baits so that way you guys can put more fish in the boat this fall season. Stay tuned. All right guys, so like I said, there's gonna be five baits that we're focusing on today. So I guess let's uh, dive in with the first one, starting with the jerk bait. And the reason why I like jerk baits is you can keep it in the strike zone longer and it's real erratic. So like this time of year when it starts getting cold and those shads start dying off or start getting pushed by these bass, a fling shad's gonna be real erratic. It's darting around this particular one is a Rapala Shadow Wrap. It's a very versatile bait and that's why I always have one tied on uh, for this time of year. So I guess I'll start with uh, where you would throw this guy. Clean, clear water is generally good jerk bait clarity as far as water clarity goes. So you really wanna throw this bait on like windier days because that chop on the water is gonna reflect off this bait and it's gonna make it look real erratic and it creates a lot of drawing power for this, for this bait. But long tapering points, um, places where there's shallow to deep water access, shallow ledges, that kind of thing. I do like throwing them around structure as well. So if, if the, like out here, we have a lot of uh, submerged timber and a lot of times those shad will get pushed up into that timber. So I'll throw this right on the edges of it, sometimes kind of in the, in the more sparse timber, try to pull those fish out. So to keep it simple, usually where I'm throwing this bait, is uh, places where the fish are gonna be schooling like points or deep water access or places with sparse cover. Uh, that's generally where I'm gonna throw this particular bait. So that leads me into when you would throw this bait. Obviously the fall is, is one great time you can throw the bait. You can throw it in the spring, in the summer. It, it just matches the shad perfectly. Uh, but for this time of year, I really like throwing it on like sunny, windy days. Uh, out here, it seems to be the ticket. I know some guys like to throw them on the cloudier days, you work them slower, uh, but on a sunny, windy fall day, uh, when they're schooling on shad, it's hard to beat a jerk bait when you're chucking it out there, working it all erratic. I don't like a slow cadence. <clears throat> I like working I like working the jerk baits really quick because uh, it just looks like a fling shad. It looks really natural to them. It gets them fired up, especially in the school, they'll get competitive and they'll start slashing at that bait. I mean, don't be surprised if you even get like two on there. So now on to how you would throw it. So you know where, you know when, and now on to how. Long cast, so there's a, a very specific setup that you can go with to get the best performance out of a jerk bait. And that's usually a seven foot or a six, six to seven foot rod is gonna give you the best length for a rod that you're gonna want. Also like a, a medium to medium light action. I like having a pretty snappy tip on there, but a soft backbone. So whenever those fish do hit, that rod will load up, but you have enough tip on there to when you snap that bait, the tip's gonna recover and that bait's gonna kind of glide underneath the water. You're gonna get a really good action uh, on that bait. And as far as the reel goes, 
uh, seven or eight. I like I like the higher gear ratio reels just so I can pick up that pop. I can pick up that slack whenever I pop up the line. I run braid to leader on everything, so I believe this is gonna be 20 pound braid, and I'll throw it on like a 10 pound fluorocarbon line. Light line uh, is what you want for jerk baits, especially with the deeper divers. It's gonna get your bait deeper. Um, it'll get it in the strike zone and keep it there longer. Now, if you're throwing around structure, you can go up to like 12 or 14 pound, depending on the situation that you're in. But most of the time out here, clear water, windy days, I'm throwing 20 pound braid to uh, 10 pound fluorocarbon. So now that you know the setup, we'll kind of talk about the cadence and the retrieval. Uh, once you hit it out there, depending on how deep the fish are, you can crank that jerk bait down to them or you can start twitching right away. Like in schooling situations, a lot of times you can bomb it out there, start twitching and they'll pick it up. If they're a little deeper though, with a deeper diving jerk bait, you can make a long cast out there and start reeling down, get it to the depth that you want, start twitching. And it depends on the water temperature and it depends on the behavior of the fish that determines your cadence. So if they're in schooling situations like they are out here right now, I'm gonna keep my cadence nice and quick. I want it to look like a fling shad that is just running for its life. Like I wanna get those bass fired up and a lot of times you can get the school fired up on the first cast and then come back in and when they see it again, they're gonna hit it because they know it's an erratic bait. On those colder days at, towards like the end of the fall, uh, going into the winter, those bass are gonna get a little more lethargic and you can slow down your cadence. You can do a pop, pop, and then let it pause for a couple seconds, pop, pop. I personally like throwing a jerk bait quick. I think it, when you work it quick, it gives a real erratic action, it catches their eye, uh, but that's all just personal preference. The warmer the water is, the faster your cadence, the colder that the water is, then you can slow down your cadence and make it look more natural. But for me, I always like having a jerk bait tied on, especially when those fish are side swiping and schooling up. It's just a great bait to cover water and catch fish. All right, so that leads me into the next bait, which I guess I'll just pick randomly here. Let's go with the top water. That's always fun. So a top water bait. I didn't go into a specific bait here because there's a lot of really good top water lures out there. They're all really good fall baits. And really just, like I said, you just want to match the forage that's in your lake where you would throw this. Um, I like throwing this bait in lakes with lots of shad, places that have like bluegill, a whopper plopper or a wake style bait does really well. And honestly, you could probably throw this bait in a very large variety of different fisheries and catch the crap out of them. It works really good on calm water and uh, choppy water as well. Even in choppy water on a windy day like it is today, it'll still call fish from a mile away. Same thing, wind blown points, shallow water with deep water access to it in and around structure. It does really good. It's a good open water bait too because you can cast it a mile and you can cover a lot of water. Predominantly, I'm throwing this bait earlier in the morning and later in the evening when those fish are heavily pushing shad. Now in the afternoon, when they're schooled up and they're pushing those shad towards the top, it's a great bait to throw as well because those fish are looking up and they're looking for stuff up on the top of the water. So it doesn't make sense to throw something that's gonna dredge real deep like a crankbait when they're looking up at the surface of the water. You're gonna go right underneath them and they're not even gonna see it. So something like this where you can make a long cast to them where they're schooling, uh, has that nice knocking sound, calm them from a ways away, and you can get some really, really big fish on this too. They make a couple different sizes in this exact lure. Uh, so depending on the size of the forage in your, in your lake, I would recommend matching this particular lure to that and you're gonna get a lot of bites. Now onto the final category, how you would throw this bait. So I think a lot of people don't get the feel on how to throw this bait, it's, it's a rhythm. If you can learn to walk this bait really good, and it's not very hard, if you can learn to walk it really good, you're gonna get a lot more bites and it's gonna look a lot more natural. I'm throwing at least a seven foot to like a seven four, uh, probably like a, depending on size, uh, with this particular bait I'm throwing, right now I have a seven foot medium action, but it's got a pretty fast tip to it. And I like that faster tip because you can get that bait to snap a little bit better. I'm throwing 30 pounds straight braid to that bait. I'm not worried about them seeing the line because it is a top water bait. If they do get finicky, I'll throw on a monofilament leader. And then for the reel, this is very important. Uh, I like the fastest gear ratio reel that I can get. You can definitely get away with like a seven, a mid seven gear ratio, but an eight to me is important because I can walk that bait, I can pick up the slack, and if I cast it to schooling fish and they stop schooling there, I can pick it up real quick and cast it to the next school and I'm not wasting a bunch of time just reeling it in. So I can cover a lot of water that way too. It's great for pitching around cover and the more cover that you can pitch at, the higher your odds are to catch that fish. So having that higher gear ratio to where you can flip it in there, work that spot, burn it back in and make another cast will definitely up your odds of catching fish. So when you throw it out there, a lot of guys like to keep their rod tip up and start 
twitching it and jerking it and you're going to get an action that way but it's not going to be a nice solid rhythm where it's just gliding back and forth you want to keep your rod tip down and you just want to snap that you just want to snap the rod tip you're not moving your whole arm you're just snapping right there at the wrist and you're snapping that rod tip down and that little slack when you pop it and it pops that slack it's just going to cause it to glide left and right and left and right and you can vary that cadence too you can throw it if they're really if they're really schooling hard you can throw it and twitch 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 and stop and twitch 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 or a continuous fast twitch will get them too as it gets a little colder you can start working it a little slower or like if you're pitching around cover you can twitch 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 and vary your cadence you want to make you want to make it look like a fleeing shad as well all of these baits are essentially designed to look like a fleeing shad. So the more erratic, in my opinion, that you can make it, the more fish is going to draw up, but you don't want to pull it out of their zone as well. So you kind of want to match how they're feeding. If they're really, if they're feeding really heavily on shad and you see them busting all over the place, get this thing as erratic as possible. Work it quick, cover lots of water. If you see them blowing up here and there, or they're just biting around certain areas, slow it down, work those key areas, and then slow down your cadence. The spook, deadly bait, will definitely catch you fish pretty easy to use and uh, it's just a must have for this time of year. Don't mind my dog in the background here. I had to kick her out of the boat so I could do this. Otherwise she's going to be standing in front of the camera. She wanted to explore so we found a little island and now she's she's pouting because she wants back in the boat. Onto the third lure, it's got to be the spinnerbait guys. A spinnerbait is probably one of the most versatile lures that's out there. It's been a staple and it's caught fish for many, many, many of thousands of years probably. So it's a must have for this time of year. It imitates like a small school of, of bait fish. And that's exactly what those bass are looking for when they're schooling around uh, on the hunt. But the big advantage of having a spinnerbait tied on there is throwing it into structure. It's it's practically weedless. I mean, you got your skirt here that helps fluff it up over branches. And then you have your wire guard here with a one big jig hook that's on top. So when you come over structure, it just kind of rolls over. It's very, very weedless. You can get it in areas where those bigger fish are and those hard to get places in that structure and give them a different perspective and uh, catch a big fish. They see they see three different targets there. They're gonna come up and they're, go, they're gonna be swinging. So when would I fish this bait? Um, I really like throwing this on like sunny, windy days. Days that'll give these blades a lot of flash, puts off a lot of vibration. So it just adds a lot of senses uh, to this bait. It's a bigger profile. You got that flash from the chop of the water. You got the vibration. I don't like throwing it on calm days. I don't think it's erratic enough to pull those fish out on a calm day. But when you add chop on the water, a little bit of wind, it really just kind of casts an illusion over this bait that'll pull those fish from a long ways away. It does really well when they're looking for bait fish together. Like this time of year or in the colder months when those bait fish start to group up, uh, it's a great lure to throw around that time. Like I said, it imitates a small school of bait fish that might have branched off from their their larger school, the mother school, you could say. And the springtime is a great time to throw this bait as well. Uh, but the fall is when I really like to throw it. Like I said, when they start grouping up on shad, it's a killer bait to be throwing. That leads me into where would I throw this bait? A jerk bait and a topwater does really well in open water. So as kind of a combination with those two lures, having this to throw into structure and to pitch around and, and work a little deeper uh, can give you a huge advantage, especially for getting a good fish. This is a big fish bait right here. But having the ability to throw into heavy, heavy structure and still get bit can boost a lot of confidence and get you more fish in the boat. But how you fish it is, is the most important. As far as setup goes, I like having a stiff rod with a softer tip to it. A lot of times when they're coming up through this, they're sweeping at this because they think it's three different fish. So they're just sweeping through hoping that they get something. So if you have a really stout rod, when they sweep through, you're just gonna pull it away from them as soon as you feel that bite. But having a soft tip will allow them to come through, hold that bait, a little load up the rod and you can hook them. But because it's a big hook on the back, you need a nice stout backbone on that rod. So having a rod that has a stout backbone and a softer tip can go a long ways. Uh, for pitching around structure, I like like a seven foot, seven foot, a seven foot to a seven foot one inch rod. Uh, for long casts, I like going up to like a 7.4. Um, I like a longer rod. It's hard to get this thing a ways out there, so having that longer rod will just give you that extra leverage to get a longer cast with it. As far as, as reels go, um, I like something with like a mid to low gear ratio. And when I cast this thing out there, like I said, I'm either going to pitch it around cover, work it real erratic around there, I'm going to pop it, I'm going to get that skirt to flare up, or I'm going to make a nice long cast, and then I'm going to kind of do the same thing on the way back. I'm going to pop it, I'm going to speed it up, I'm going to drop it. I want that skirt flaring up and I want these these blades flaring out. To wrap it up, a spinnerbait is a very, very versatile bait that I would highly, highly recommend having in your arsenal for this type of year. I mean, it's just such a deadly bait and you can do so much with it. All right, so now on to the fourth bait of our five here. Almost there, guys. So this one's a, a unique one. I think it 
will catch fish literally anywhere around the country, but it's more of like a style preference. A lot of guys don't like throwing this type of bait, especially when the fish are schooling up, but it just flat out gets bit. And I'm usually throwing this when the bite's a little tougher. When you get that weird cold snap throughout the fall, you get those couple of colder days where these fish just don't wanna, they don't wanna cooperate. They're, they're lethargic, they're lazy. Um, and that bait is, of course, a drop shot. But essentially what it is, is you got your hook up top with a small finesse worm, and then you got a weight on the bottom, and that just gives the fish an elevated look. And I think a lot of guys misinterpret this bait. I think they don't understand it. Uh, it's actually designed to be a vertical style bait. It's really good for pinpointing fish. Of course, you can cast it out there, let it hit the bottom and drag it along. You'll get bit that way. But if you can go out and find the fish and drop straight down on them, especially in those deeper water scenarios when those fish are more finicky, you're gonna get bites. So, kind of to summarize what I just said, when am I fishing this? I'm gonna fish it on those colder days. I'm gonna fish it when the bite's a little tougher, or I'm gonna fish it when those fish are just really deep, but they're schooled up. So I can look on my graph, roll up on top of them, and drop straight down in that school, and I know I'm in their face because I'm elevated up off the bottom, and it's just a matter of time before they eat it. I mean, there's so much action with that soft worm right there that they cannot resist it. As far as location for this bait, you can kind of throw it anywhere. Like I said, I predominantly like it in those deeper water scenarios, so like the end of those big points, bluffs, that kind of thing. Um, but I've caught fish in very shallow water with this too. A lot of times if you get your fish schooling up super shallow, really open water and they're not chasing anything down, they're being kind of weird, you can flip this in. Or if you get a follower, you can flip this in behind it and catch that fish and pick it up. Usually this bait is gonna shine when you're coming out of that summer to fall or when you're going into that summer to fall transition where they're kind of weird, they're kind of finicky, or you're going to that fall to the winter transition where they start slowing down, they start getting a little more lethargic, they're trying to get into their winter pattern, they're moving out to the main lake, that's when this bait is gonna shine. And I know a lot of guys out there, they don't like throwing the drop shot, but man, it just flat out gets bit. So a lot of guys will get really, really picky on, on how they throw this particular technique, and you really can, and I think being a little picky about it I will really help you out. There's a lot of little tricks that goes into this to getting more bites or feeling more bites. And that starts, to me, that starts out with having the right rod. You want a nice, lightweight, sensitive rod. This is a light finesse technique. You're using a light action rod and a light line for this, lightweight hooks. So it's all about sensitivity when you're fishing down deeper. Uh, and I think that rod is the number one key player there. For me, I generally like throwing like a seven foot to seven foot two rod with a really responsive tip to it. So like with a big fish, a lot of times you won't even feel the bite. They'll just suck it in and sit there so you'll pull up. So having that little bit of a sensitive, a little bit more sensitive rod, you might be able to pick that up earlier before they spit it out. Or if they move it all, you're gonna feel that versus having a too stiff of a rod or not sensitive enough rod where you're gonna miss that fish and not even know that they were there. The second key component to me is line. Um, I like going with, as thin of a line as I can get per pound. I definitely throw braid to leader. I do not throw straight floor on my spinning. I think there's too much stretch and not enough sensitivity. With your braid to leader, your bait's getting down there quicker if you're fishing it on like a vertical presentation. And then as far as the leader goes, I'm going mostly with a seven to eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Super invisible, lightweight, thin, no stretch. If I'm in really clear water scenarios or the fish are being line shy, I'll go down to six pound. Uh, but very rarely am I going over eight. I'll go up to 10 if I'm fishing fishing it around structure, but 99% of the time I'm throwing seven or eight pounds. As far as the hook goes, that's another big component there. I like nose hooking it. A lot of guys like throwing like the weedless method and that works great too, but I just have a lot more luck having that nose hook method and it gives your worm way more action. Now, if you're throwing around structure, having that weedless presentation will definitely help you out. You're not gonna get caught on the branches as much or on the rocks. As with a nose hook, you're gonna get caught up a lot more, but your hookup ratio is much better. As far as like the distance between the weight and the hook, um, that's all dictated by what the fish are doing. If they're schooling up a lot and they're staying higher, I'll throw a longer leader to get it up into their face, into their line of sight. If they're really lethargic and they're getting into the winter and they're staying deeper, I'll go with a shorter leader there to keep it in their face closer towards the bottom. I know a lot of guys don't like throwing the drop shot, and I'm sure there's some of you watching this video now, they're like, ah, oh, of all baits to throw during the fall, why pick a drop shot? The drop shot just excels when the bite is tough. And throwing that drop shot out there is gonna get bit, and it catches all sizes of fish. So you can't deny when the bite gets tough that the drop shot is the way to go. All right, guys, about to wrap this up. On to the fifth bait, but not the least, the underspin. That right there, it's probably one of the most deadly fall baits that you can throw. It is so versatile, you can pretty much fish it anywhere around structure, open water, deep water. It's just such a good bait, it's compact, it's heavy duty, 
and it imitates a small shad so perfectly. If you have bluegill in your water, you can go to like a watermelon red color and throw a bigger trailer on the back there and imitate that bluegill size perfectly. I really like it this time of year because in the fall, they're generally chasing smaller bait fish. They're not chasing the big ones. So having that underspin like that, you can still imitate a really small bait fish, but you have a nice solid hook on there to get a good hook set in case you get those bigger fish. You guys have probably seen me throw this bait a hundred million times and talk about it all the time. And I just have so much confidence in an underspin, especially this time of year. In the last video that I posted at Alamo, I was just hammering them on this bait. Like it was brutal. So because it's so versatile, where would I throw this bait? So I essentially break down the locations into like two categories. I like throwing in open water around shad. Uh, because I can get this thing down below the shad ball and it looks just like them. So those bigger fish that are hanging out down below, uh, below the shad and below all those aggressive bass up top, I can get this down below them and pick off those bigger fish because of the weighted head. Or I can fish it fast on the top and it looks real erratic with that blade. It has a lot of drawing power with that flash I and mean, it can pull up fish on the top of the school too. Or I like throwing it around structure. It's a great bait to skip with the right trailer on the back and you can get a small profile into a tight space uh, that a fish might not usually see a bait in and you have that heavy duty hook on there so if you do hook a fish in there you can give them a good hook set and you can pull them out you don't have to worry about that hook bending out on you really around structure is where i really really like throwing this bait it's not a super erratic bait like the jerk bait is it's not going side to side it's going up and down or it's stopping or speeding up you have less movement with this bait so having it inside structure it gives it the illusion of that fling bait fish you have the blade and then on like a nice windy day it's going to give it a lot of flash and you're going to catch fish with it so when do i like throwing this bait you know fall time is probably my number one time that i like throwing it anytime they're chasing shad is a great time to throw it uh especially on cold days this is going to get a bit more than like your spinner bait will it's a smaller profile it's got a smaller blade on it a little more finesse um, so on your colder days, this might get bit a little better than like your erratic jerk bait or your bigger spinner baits. Now the cool thing is it's kind of like a hybrid between the two. So it's still great out in open water, but you can also get it into a little bit of structure as well. So you're giving the fish a different look and it's just a little more versatile. You almost have like the best of both worlds into one little bait. That kind of leads me into how, how I would throw this bait. I guess I'll start with the setup. Um, generally, if I'm throwing around structure, I like going with like a seven foot to seven foot one rod. Medium fast probably is what I'm gonna be throwing this on. I like it a little softer uh, just cause it's nicer for skipping. Um, and I still have enough backbone to pull those fish out of the cover. As far as a rod for like open water, I like going with like a longer rod, a seven two to seven four, like a medium heavy, moderate or a medium fast. Uh, something I can air out a cast with, get it a long ways away, but still have enough backbone on a full length cast to get to drive that hook. Now, as far as the reel goes for both setups, I like a lower gear ratio. I don't like uh, super fast gear ratios. I think a 7.5 is probably the fastest that I would rock with this, just because you can kind of slow roll it, twitch it, and you can keep your cadence with it. When you have a, a really fast reel, you're going to keep this bait too high up in the water column. Now, if they're schooling, you could definitely get away with it, but generally speaking, I like getting this below the shad, which having that lower gear ratio definitely helps with. As far as line goes, um, definitely braid to leader. I'm going 30 pound braid, sometimes 20 pound braid, but mostly 30 pound braid to like a 12 or 14 pound fluorocarbon leader. Uh, I'll throw a 12 pound in open water and 14 pound all around structure, just so I have that extra little diameter in case it does get nicked up. If I'm fishing around structure, um, I like skipping it because it gives it like a, when you skip a bait, and a bass sees it, it looks like a shad that's skimming across the water that's trying to flee. And then they look over and they see that bait right in front of their face. A lot of times it'll create a reaction strike. But I like skipping it because it's got a flat head and with the right trailer, it just glides over the water. You can get it way back underneath structure. And when I'm reeling it out there, I just wanted to tick off the branches, tick off the rocks, um, get through the grass. I'm doing little twitches trying to flare that blade up, similar to like how I was saying about the spinner bait, and that'll get bit. When I'm throwing in open water, depending on how the fish are schooling, I'll speed it up or I'll slow it down. If they're really pushing shad towards the top of the surface, I'll speed it up, keep it towards the top, almost wake it in a way, get that blade really vibrating. Um, or if I know there's bigger fish below, I'll make a long cast, I'll let it sink down a little bit, and then I'll start slowly reeling underneath with uh, intermediate pauses and jerks to get that blade flashing around and kind of get that paddle tail freaking out. Alrighty guys, well that pretty much wraps up the video. <laughs> I talked a lot there, so I'm sorry if this dragged on a little bit, but uh, I hope this information will help you guys out. When you come out here to the lake, you have some confidence in what baits to throw and you can get some fish in the boat. I really wanted to make a sincere video about these baits because it's not like I just researched what baits work during the fall. Like These baits have worked for me for a long time. I have so much confidence in these types of baits. 
like go through you can go through my old videos and you can see me catching fish on almost these exact same baits here those are the types of videos i like those are the types of opinions i like i'm not going to give you guys false information or just what joe schmo said on the internet but i'm going to stop rambling and get this video all wrapped up uh it's evening right now daisy's she's clocked out she's ready to she's ready to start fishing we've been sitting here for like three hours trying to film this so we're gonna get back out on the water. I'm gonna be fishing these baits the rest of the day. So if I catch any on these baits, I'm gonna throw it at the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. But for right now, I'm just gonna wrap it up. So I hope this information helped you guys out and you can implement it when you come out to the lake next time. I hope you guys have a good fall season and uh, put lots of fish in the boat. These baits will definitely do it for you. Like I said, with the underspin, check them out at Crystal Lures. They make a great bait and it just flat out gets bit. If you guys have any questions for me or wanna add your own baits that you like, uh, put them down in the comments section below if you like this if this video helped you out and you learned something hit that like button and if you're new to the page guys thank you so much if you're watching this for the first time welcome to the channel hit that subscribe button and that bell icon so you'll see the next video as always guys i will see you in the next video good luck out there